Welcome, welcome to Arizona Real Estate News. Today we're going to talk about taxes and we're going to talk about are we going to see a huge increase in our property taxes because the increase in property values. We're going to discuss this with Pat, what's my rate, McMasters, and Jacqueline Smith with their Arizona Foothills Century 21 or Century 21 Arizona Foothills. And oh, Ruby is still out today. Uh, we're getting closer on the contract negotiations. Um, <laughs> Uh, no wage improvements, but uh, uh, we're getting a little wiggle room on the request that she had for green M&Ms uh, in, her, in her dressing room. So we've agreed to go ahead and just leave M&Ms and she can pick out her own color. So <laughs> we're making progress there. Pat's so deep gonna... in thought about those M&Ms, I can tell. Oh, I know. So I, I'm going to share some just some quick numbers in the Arizona market. And then Pat's going to give us this great cheery news on rates that we're seeing. Um, you know, insert smile here. <laughs> um, and then we're going to look at our um, Arizona real estate taxes and how they're computed compared to other states. And Jackie's going to give us some insight into how taxes are computed for new builds as well. So if that's uh, something on your mind, you have come to the right place. But let's I'm going to read a couple numbers here that, that just came up and it said that new home closed sales count was up six point. 1%, no, 8.1% from June of last year, but down 7.3 from May. That's interesting. So new construction sales were down 7% month over month. New home median sales price is up 3.7 for a year from a year ago and up 2.4 from last month. So that's June to May. Here's the resale transaction count was down 6,008 with medium sales prices of 450,000. The resale count was down 24% from last year. That's how slow sales are, but down 7.1% from May. So we took a big dip in June. And on my seven day moving average, um, you can really see it here, how it's just falling off the map, but that's 4th of July. But what's interesting is the gap between the two has really grown, but I can't really make anything of these numbers until after the holiday shakes out. So. Those are just going to look weird for a while. One of the things that I notice here is on the Cromford index on the supply and demand part here. Notice how right, let me move this mouse here, but right here, you can see demand starting to fall on the demand index. And the overall Cromford market index is still, we're not getting any relief on the supply side. So sales are definitely taking a hit right now, and uh, but you wouldn't know it if you're out there in the in the market. It's you know it's still somewhat brisk. But let's talk about the implications of taxes right now because a um, lot of a lot of states are getting hit really hard with with higher tax bills because of the value of their homes, especially where I'm at up here. A lot of friends said they got new. Uh, assessments and they're just getting slaughtered. So, you know, you're out here, you're retired, and your tax bill went through the roof. And you're seeing that, in, especially in places like Texas and New York, Chicago. But here, here's what about some, Florida, here, Rick? California. Yeah. Well, what about Florida. Florida. Yeah. I don't know Florida's tax rules, but let me ask you this Does California still have Prop 13? That was where your your taxes stayed the same until you sold. The last I heard, yes, but I can't, okay. I'm not 100% sure. Well, we have, and this is how they calculate our taxes out here. So the first number that they come up with is the current cash value, which is called FCV, calculated by the county tax assessor. The full cash value is based on comparable homes and nearby home sales. I'm going to show you how that shakes out in a minute. Many people think that this means their property tax would be based on the home's full cash value, but it's not the case. Instead, real estate taxes in Arizona are calculated off the assessed or limited property value, which is called an LPV, and it's calculated on an individual basis according to a statutory formula that was put in place to reduce the effects of inflation on property taxes. 
by law, the LPV can't exceed the home cash value, and it's often lower than the FCV. There is a limit as to how much it can go up each year. Currently, 5% maximum, which limits big tax hikes. Property values are rising quickly. That's the good news for Arizona. Home price has gone crazy, but you're limited at 5% per year. Now, mm -hmm. I've got a great example of this in this home that I pulled up that I know. And you can see here the 2020 final showed um, the FCV at 239000 the LPV at 219 It's always lower. Then in 2021, you have 263,000 LPV at 230,000. Go to 2024, and you've got uh, the full cash value is 435. The LPV is 267,000. This house sold uh, two years ago for $650,000. Yet their LPV is 267,000. So it can't go up more than 5% a year. And here's their tax amount. 2020 it was 2885. Then it went up to 2932. Then it dipped to 2874. One of the reasons that taxes can dip is the tax rate. Now the tax rate is determined by a lot of things, and one of the things that makes a determination is just how much revenue is coming in from real estate taxes. If there's a lot more revenue because of more transactions the tax rate actually goes down. But the money is collected in Arizona. Here's the chart here about Maricopa County Treasurer, county controlled property taxes make up only 11% of total property taxes. 53% to 57% are school districts. 12% is for the city, 11% is for the county, 11% is for community college. And then you've got 9% for special districts and only, oh, 0% for the state. So so that's how it's divvied up. So all depending on your school district really is what drives the, the, uh, the tax rate. And then you have here a link that I can put in uh, below on property taxes and how you can assess and try to figure out what your property tax is going to be. But quite honestly, just go to the state site and look up your your taxes and you'll see exactly where where you're going to line out but Jackie you got some news on new construction and how that works so tell me what uh, what that's all about so with new construction I spoke to one of our reps that we work with this morning and um, you know because new construction is like driving the market right now and I've had a lot of clients ask when they're purchasing because they'll see the taxes you know they're when they're when they're purchasing a new build, it's reflected as vacant land. So the taxes could be three, four, five hundred dollars, and that's it. And so um, basically, what the rep explained to me is they will calculate based off the value of the home, either based off the appraisal or based off the sales price. Typically, they're going to be the same. Um, of course, I have seen a couple of uh, the appraisals come in low recently, which is so funny because people say, "Oh my gosh, this house is." Got a $50,000 price reduction. No, it didn't. It was a gimmick to pull them in the door. Anyways, um, so basically, though, what they'll do is they'll calculate what the taxes are going to be because, you know, they always collect for their insurance and the taxes, put it in the impound account. So when the taxes come due, which is twice a year, the bank is able to pay that payment. And so they do base it off the value and they'll collect for that and they'll the thing is, is the new builder really never knows when that is going to be reassessed. Sometimes it could be two months. Sometimes it's they said it's, they've seen it take up to 12 or 13 months before it's reassessed. So it just kind of depends. It's a, you know, anybody's guess, really. So a lot of times that first year or two, buyers will end up with some excess in their impounds account because the taxes may not adjust for the first 12 months. Will the, will the assessment, do you think, be roughly right around the purchase price? So if yes. they pay five fifty, yep. it'll be the purchase price. But then, but then it's going to get lowered because, right. as we saw in the example, you've got the FCV and the L, whatever the heck that other one was, um, the uh, LPV. So it'll be lower than five fifty. Yeah. The jump so, in, the jump yeah. in real quick with Jackie. I'm, I'm not. This is not my area of expertise. Is taxes like the, like I said, but. 
I have found, you know, with new builds and uh, of that nature, I've seen a lot of LOs go back and forth with underwriters. Like I said, I just want to jump in and say this as a point of reference is that there's always a lot of jostling back and forth the last couple of days as far as, correct me if I'm wrong, Jackie, but, you know, the, they're saying, ah, taxes are this. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, there's always some jostling back and forth between the underwriter and the title saying these taxes are wrong. It's supposed to be, you know, you're showing at four, $500 a year and it's supposed to be $325 you know, a month. Um, please provide us some proof. And there's always seems like there's some jostling back and forth. It's, it's kind of an estimate and it's not, there's no, um, correct me if I'm wrong, there's no rhyme or reason on every deal. It's always seems like it's no. a little different. There isn't. And when I was talking to the rep, because that land was taxed as a whole and then they just split it up. And when they're yeah. selling them off, it, it's all an estimate. And then they have no. And But when they're qualifying they're because I did ask, are they qualifying based off that or what they estimate the taxes to be? And they do. You know, you know this, Pat, they're qualifying based off what the taxes are to be well, versus yeah. what they are. But. I mean, yeah, she even said a lot of times there's a lot of confusion with that because sometimes it'll be heavy ended. It'll end up more on one lot than another yeah. lot. And they're like, how do we fix this? Yeah, well, we, that's we why had, we had one in Gilbert. Pat. We had one in Gilbert. Uh, I don't know if you remember me telling you a story where the lender was in California and they were computing the taxes based off a of California formula. So the house, mm -hmm. I think, was eight hundred forty thousand. And they were putting in the loan docs and everything that his tax bill was going to be eleven, eleven thousand dollars. And and we're pushing back and going, why are you guys estimating? You can go right to the county site, and I pulled it up and sent it to him. Here, we already know what next year's taxes are going to be. They're right here, and we had yeah. to delay closing because they wouldn't correct it. And oh, I'm yeah. not screaming at these people. Um, I go, what else do you need me to send you? I sent, sent you the actual county records for the tax value for that home, the tax assessment, and you're throwing me something from California. So you're absolutely right, Pat. Sometimes they really muddy the water up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that just be uh, a jostling back and forth. Usually they get it uh, figured out, but it's always back and forth between title, the lender, the underwriter saying, the underwriter saying, oh, the taxes or this, you know, it, they try to get estimates and it's just, it's kind of like a back and forth for a couple of days. Well, the good news is for Arizona is that, you know, homeowners don't, you're not going to get slammed with a huge tax increase, despite the big run up we've had in values. Um, and that's, that's a great gift for us. I know um, up here in Washington state, I was out at my cousin's lake property over the 4th of July. They took me on a little boat cruise. That's a small lake. Not very many homes on it. I'm going to say maybe 30, but there was a home across the lake that got assessed at $1.4 million. Beautiful home. Well, they have a tiny home that's sitting on their lot, and it's it's pretty primitive. And she said their taxes went up exponentially because of that one assessment across the lake. Wow. And, I said, you know, I don't know how Washington State taxes are calculated, but that seems like that's way off base. One home on the lake, and it's a luxury yeah. home, and it affected your tiny home? That doesn't make any sense. No. That's crazy. I, I hear on national average we're at least 1% lower than we what are. anybody. We, uh, in fact, I had that number here. It said the, uh, um, the well, average homeowner is on a pays about well about eight hundred dollars under the national average um a home worth seven hundred thousand arizona would average five thousand nine hundred fifteen in annual property taxes while the national average would be about eight thousand four hundred and seventy seven wow that's, and you'd probably be over 20 in new york i'll tell you where it's really rough is texas really and it's it's different by municipality each tax rate is different You'll look at one house and your tax is going to be $8,000 and you can go three miles away and now it's $11,000 annually. They're, you know, a $300,000 home down there has a $9,000 tax bill. That's crazy. And it's staggering. And same with New York. And, yeah. and, the, and New York taxes for schools are exponentially higher than any 
state that I've, I've ever seen. It was, it was unbelievable. And then now the other thing that I discovered when I lived in New York was that now here, when you go in and you purchase your home, you pay in arrears. So any taxes that, that are owed in New York, you have to pay one year in advance. So I was warned we were closing on the house to go, Rick, be prepared. You're going to have to come up with $4,500 right off the get go. Different than an impound account. So do you have to pay ahead and set up an impound account? Correct. That's nuts. Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about, you know, trying to bring more money to the table. Like I was not prepared for that, but fortunately I had somebody warn me ahead of time, you know, don't, don't get caught at the closing table when they go, Oh, Hey, by the way. So, so it, it pays to know what your state is doing and how they, how they collect that. So if you're from out of state and you're not used to Arizona taxes, know that you don't have to pay them ahead of time and uh, you can set up an impound account and also know that they are considerably lower than, than most states. But I think the most important thing to remember is that we're capped at 5%. So, and that's in order to not outpace inflation. So that's a, that's a good thing for the state of Arizona. And I hope they don't monkey with it. So Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's going on with rates? Uh, uh, rates are having a bad, bad day. The, the employment report came out, showed an increase of 497,000 jobs, which blew away the estimates of about 225, 230. So uh, obviously the next, the BLS report's coming out tomorrow. The ADP comes out before the Bureau of Labor Statistics, but uh, showed an increase of 497,000 jobs, construction and entertainment. And we have been, we have just been absolutely all over the board today. The U.S. 10-year Treasury is up 11 basis points over 4, 4.03. And as you can see, the, the 5.5 coupon was, it's down 48 basis points, but it was down like 80 basis points earlier in the morning. Um, and this is basically, this is a chart on rates. Obviously, we're seeing this since May, middle of May. We're just seeing this increase right here. And I still think we're still, we're probably going to see some ceilings here. I mean, we've seen a range of right here is like four four thirty four twenty three. This is um, the tip in four thirty five on the ten year Treasury. So we still might have some room to run on the rates. Right now we're seeing rates. It's been pretty pretty brutal. I mean, I'll just flip this over here. Um, right now we are seeing rates in the. Uh, let me pull this up quick. I mean, we're seeing rates right now seven and a quarter. And we saw them six and three quarters, six and seven eighths. They're up three eighths to half a point in the last month. So it is not, definitely has not been a, a, a interest rate friendly environment the last month. Well, Jackie, what's that, uh, what's that doing to the market? A couple things. I am so mad at the Fed, first of all, right now, but I'll get into that in a second. So uh, our listings are selling like hotcakes. Anything we have, um, it's flying off the shelf. Somehow I became the expert in a manufactured home park, and they're all 150000 and less, and those things are selling in days. And then uh, we listed another house over by Westgate uh, less than a week. We've already got a full price offer. Now, they are asking for concessions, but I don't know if our seller is going to be willing to pay concessions. I feel really bad for first-time home buyers. Horrible. Because they came into the market in 2021, even the beginning of 22. They tried their hearts out to buy homes. Couldn't get anything because the investors were buying everything. They sidelined. I had so many clients that just said, we're going to wait. In the last three or four months, I have had so many clients come back out and say, you know what? We're willing to be realistic. We know we can't get as much house. We're going to set our expectations lower. We're comfortable. We don't want to rent. Let's find a house. I set them up on searches. They call me. Are my searches set up? Yes, your search is set up. I'm not getting any houses. I know you're not getting any houses. We don't have any houses. And I feel horrible for them. It's like the Fed is just determined to batter the first time home buyer. I mean, they created this mess in the first place and they're trying to fix it. But what they're doing, they're just hurting everybody. And so I've got buyers that came back, they're looking, but now they're teetering on being able to qualify because the rates have jacked up so much in the last couple of weeks. 
and, and they just don't know what to do. I mean, I had a client yesterday that was in absolute tears because she's like, I, I, I'm sick of renting. I don't want to do this anymore, but I can't find anything. Yeah, it's definitely a tough market for for bars right now, but I also think it's a tough uh, market for the for the Fed to try and look at too. You know, keep in mind we're we're in a real estate bubble, so when we look at Fed make a move, it just we're we're looking at it in terms of what it means for real estate. But when it <laughs> but they're looking in terms of what does it mean for a sound dollar? What does it mean for inflation? And real estate's a casualty of that. And so you've got uh, globally, um, you've got interest rates staying higher and we can't go much lower because we'll lose value of the dollar because you're going to take your money and you're going to move it somewhere else you're going to get a higher rate so they're they've really got this really difficult challenge that's out there and all of this was created globally when when we started flooding the market but uh um i don't see having just got on my soapbox there for a moment i don't see this shaking out anytime soon i mean we've said before that we're going to muddle along but we keep expecting things to change in a one month two months three months and we could be talking about this next year i mean it really could absolutely be in there for us and i think yeah. uh um you know as long as this inventory is going on so a couple other interesting numbers are i looked at iBuyers. i looked at open door they only have 73 homes on the market now remember last year at this time they were up to 2100 homes and they were trying desperately to get them off their books. Well, they've done that. They got them off their books. Some of them they sold in bulk to investors. And uh, now the next thing, the next rumor of shadow inventory that's coming on now is Airbnbs. Well, when you really take a look at it, you take the number, and it now varies by city. But for us, if 75% of our Airbnbs said, that's it, we're out, we're selling, we still wouldn't have enough homes. So um, it's, it's just... The situation that we're in, and 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 we're trying to get clarification on just how far down Airbnb revenue is, and it's hard to hard to look at. Uh, but um, I know I had a survey on my community page, and people said, "No, I'm fine. I'm uh, mm -hmm. I'm not getting hurt." And up here, they're not getting hurt, but where they are getting hurt, that we're going to see, I think, the end of this year in the next year is regulation. There's oh, a lot absolutely. of wacky yeah. stuff going on. But Pat and was right. And Bernardino. Yeah. But Pat was right when he said a couple of weeks ago, even if they all said, okay, we're going to list, they're not going to all list at the same time. They're going to trickle on the market. They're going to get eaten up as fast as they come on the market. And the majority of those, I, it, you know, the townhomes and condos, they might satisfy the first time home buyers, but a lot of those are in Scottsdale zip codes. And so those are still going to be higher priced, five, six hundred thousand. And you're mm -hmm. right. The Fed does have a horrible job on their hands right now. They lower rates, inflation and the market's just going to go berserk and there's going to be bidding wars again. So inflation goes up on real estate. They don't lower rates. Nobody puts our house on the market and it keeps what little inventory we have in the higher price still. So it's just stuck. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. Um, some goofy statistics the other day. I can't remember what city it was, but they are taxing Airbnbs at a rate of 15%. And this money is to be used to help subsidize low income housing. Now think about that for a minute, because we've seen it in taxation all the time. Okay. So you're going to tax these guys so much that they're probably going to go out of business and sell their homes. Now, how much revenue are you generating? for low income housing. It's like taxing <laughs> cigarettes so that you can put together these campaigns to teach people to stop smoking. Well, once they've stopped smoking, you no longer get any revenue to continue that campaign. <laughs> so, Good point. It's, hey, it's Jackie, a, I got a quick question. I got a, just to, sorry, say, sorry to jump in. You know, we saw in the last couple of months that we get, I mean, in the last six to eight months, you know, when we saw rates spike up in the lows, you know, low sevens, there was a slowdown. I mean, uh, do you think, you know, we're, obviously, like I said, some of the rates I'm pulling up, I mean, I, me, myself being a mortgage broker, you know, my rates are seven a quarter. I can't imagine, obviously, a retail bank, which is typically, you know, what I've seen from my typical experience has been a quarter to half a point higher. So, I mean, some of these retail banks are probably 
tipping mid to high sevens in their rates. Mm -hmm. And we saw a slowdown before. You think we'll see that slowdown activity wise where all of a sudden, you know, because all of a sudden the seller concessions come back and to try to sell a home. Like, Hey, I'll give you, I'll give you the money to do a buy down. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm seeing it slow down for two reasons. One, the biggest one actually, because people were getting very comfortable, not very comfortable, but they were getting comfortable yeah. and realistic with the six and three quarters, even teetering seven. But some of these people that I have out looking, for instance, I, you know, they know it goes out to seven and a quarter. They suddenly aren't going to qualify. And so they're starting to panic and they want to find a home. And they're like, do we sign a new lease? So, yes, if we get up, I mean, I've got some Navy Fed people that have come to me and I'm I'm guessing they're at seven and three quarters because I, I shouldn't say Navy Fed is higher, but they are higher. Yeah. I mean, most, like you said, most banks are higher and the clients it's are looking depends. at homes and I'm like, you need to call the lender and make sure where your numbers are because we've had such an adjustment recently because, you know, they're told at six and three quarters, this is what they could qualify for 450. Well, you can't qualify for 450 anymore. It just changed again. And so it's just. Yeah. I mean, we were seeing, you know, back a couple months ago, we were seeing, you know, like I said, you figure six and three, oh, six and five aces um, to set, you know, to the difference between six, seven, three ace and six and um, say five ace, you're looking at a difference of $228 a month. And that definitely would make a big difference in qualifying. You know, these, mm -hmm. these moves that we're seeing in interest rates are definitely making, are going to make another impact on qualifications. I mean, when they fluctuate between six and a half, six and five ace and six and three quarters, not a big deal, but when you see a run up from six and five ace up to say seven and a quarter, seven and three ace, all of a sudden you start pushing a lot of people out again. Here's here's the difference though between this year and last year. So last year, when our interest rates went up, all the listings came on the market, right? Everybody was even contemplating, thinking, Oh, I missed the top. I better list now. And so our market increased greatly quickly. That's not going to mm -hmm. happen this year because those people are not letting go. That that already happened. And so I think our prices are still going to stay up because there's job transfers, there's divorces, there's marriages, there's babies being born. I'm I've got constant clients that have to move because of necessity. And there is yeah. no inventory. And I I think the people that were going to list because they missed the top, they already did that last year. So, yeah, and you can see it. It's pretty obvious here. This is new listings by month. And you can see this bottom line here is trending well below the last two years. These are new listings that are coming on. It's it's trailing off again. It's uh, they're just not wow. there. Nobody's participating in selling a home. So that's that's why, you know, sales. I mean, even though I said that um, Fourth of July doesn't really count. I mean, take a look at new contracts in the ticker below. It's 2,441. We were rocking between 3,500 and 4,000 last year. We're down to 2,400 contracts last week. Now, it, again, it's a holiday. Will we pop back up to 2,900? Probably. But we keep hitting that ceiling. We're not getting, getting past there for both of those reasons. One, I'm priced out. And two, there's just nothing, nothing out there. So it's a challenge for buyers it's not much of a challenge for sellers uh, there mm -hmm. is there is money out there there are people qualified there are a lot of people out there with cash so there is purchasing going on so when you hear these things that say that sales are bad business is bad look if you're a seller trust me when i tell you you'll find a buyer mm -hmm. they're, they're out there mm -hmm. and uh you know where they're getting their money i don't know uh, you know, <laughs> there's a, you know, we still have some bidding wars going on and it's, it's like anything else. It, you know, there's, if there's only one product out there and 10 people want it, they're going to pay more so they can get it. And that's, that's what we're seeing. New construction, yeah. everybody's gravitating there because, you know, they've got better rates and they have more availability. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, they're national. starting to slow down. They're starting to slow down on what they're offering because they don't have to. 
So they're yeah. offering three, yeah. you know, I, I was out showing new builds this last weekend and I'm like, okay, so you've got what interest rate and how much in concessions? We got concessions. Use it how you want. And I'm like, okay, you're not, uh, you're not doing the blocks anymore. And they're like, no. And hmm. some builders are, but I'm so seeing the that what? really start the blocks were, okay, we've got 4.9 or up to five and a half percent interest yeah, rate. Now yeah. there are still a few that are doing it. Well, yeah, because that, that. But you're going to get either or. You're not getting both anymore. And it's yep. starting to trail off. Yeah. There are, I mean, are less and less. Demand. Yeah, there's less and less builders that are offering it. They'll give you the concessions. You're going to get something, either concessions or the buy down. Or there are a few. If you can close, and I just did one. So for instance, it was a VA loan. Century Communities, I had never even heard of this builder. Um, of course, we did an inspection. I do an, I always make sure my buyers do an inspection on every single new build because I don't care if it's the best builder, you're still going to find stuff. They did uh, five and a quarter, and they gave them, I think it was $5,000 toward closing costs. They had to close by the end of July. We walked, I'm sorry, the end of June. We walked in there June 5th. It was a VA buyer. I'm like, how are you going to do this? Do you know the morning of closing, we were still waiting for the appraisal? It closed on time. I don't know how the, the lender pulled it off. We closed on time. Wow. Yeah, they, 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 they don't tell you what's really going on in the background. So, <laughs> Well, it tell you what, it, as move. we get closer to closer to the uh, Fed meeting in, towards the end of July, uh, this inflation data is going to be key to everything. Um, are they going to raise? Are they going to continue the pause? And uh, if I'm a betting man, I don't think the pause is going to continue because um, I think inflation is, while it's cooling, um, you know, I don't think I, I my take on the Fed is that they don't want to pull the same mistake that was done in the 70s where they, they pull back too soon. So think- like, they're going to. Mm-hmm. They're gonna keep moving things till they break something, and then then they'll jump back in. So, it's that's my you know. I think this morning it was. It. I think this morning it was eighty seven percent chance that they'll raise. Yeah, yeah and the markets are yep. reflecting that right now. So we'll uh, we'll we'll jump in and well, take see, a look at that when that day comes. Well, that's the thing. Obviously, the market always looks ahead, so you're going to see some a lot of jostling around here. Some probably some tough days, but uh, once the news comes out, it's usually like a release release valve and actually rates improve. So Yeah, yeah, we've we'll seen see. that every time, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, just about. Well, guys, thanks for joining me. I uh, um, we got, uh, It's nice to sit outside here, um, and, I'm, I'm, and I know you guys can't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless and we want to melt. You probably hate me. So, but, uh, no, so it's, uh, it's, it's nice to do something a little bit different here than sit inside the trailer and do a live stream or, or this podcast, but it's great to have you join me and let's just continue to watch the numbers. And thanks for helping everybody out on understanding Arizona taxes. Have a great day. See you buddy. See you. Okay. Everyone.